Yeah, uh, Kayla McGee White, what did you see that we didn't see? What are your thoughts on the performance on both sides tonight? So I don't think that Trump had as bad of a night as some are making it out to be. Yes, he fell for some of her bait. Yes, he rambled a bit. But I think what the past few months have confirmed, and even several polls this weekend have confirmed, is that voters much prefer what they know about Trump to what they don't know about Kamala mm -hmm. Harris. And the fact of the matter is, I walked away from this debate, and I still don't know where Kamala Harris stands on fracking. I don't know whether she supports any restrictions on late-term abortion. I don't know whether she still supports a mandatory gun buyback program. These are serious problems for her campaign that she's going to have to address eventually, regardless of whether the ABC moderators wanted to ask her those specific follow-ups or not. Yeah, and I thought, Julie Hamill, that this would be certain by the end of the night. I thought we would know where Kamala Harris, because they are going to have to demand that she answer these things. And she didn't. And they didn't. No, of course she didn't. But this is, it is a performance. That's exactly what it was. And I found it very frustrating. As an American citizen, I voted for Biden. I regret it. I'm sorry. I'm paying, I'm paying for it dearly, okay? Don't forgive you, Julie. I'm sorry. But I'm a person who is now so, so heavily opposed to the Democratic Party because of what they've done to my blue county, my blue state, and my blue country. They have turned us into a third world nation. Yeah. My kids' school had to shut down halfway through the day on Monday because we can't cool the building enough to make it safe for kids. And by the way, our governor is out there gallivanting in Philadelphia while we have multiple wildfires burning throughout the state. Yeah. So I wish, you know, I would love to have seen some substance, but it was just a performance. It was just a show. It was a lot of lies and a lot of BS. Harrison Fields, here is the former president on Harris not having a plan. This is call for one, Katie. She doesn't have a plan. She copied Biden's plan. And it's like four sentences, like run, spot, run. Four sentences that are just, oh, we'll try and lower taxes. She doesn't have a plan. Take a look at her plan. She doesn't have a plan. But Harrison Fields, she never had to explain her plan. You're 100% right. She never had to explain it. And she also never took responsibility for her failed actions. You can't try to distance yourself from Joe Biden and then also claim to be a part of all the quote unquote success, which the American people truly haven't felt. The reality is uh, Kamala Harris had an opportunity to introduce herself to the American people. And she chose mm -hmm. to gaslight and lie to them about the feelings that we all feel. We all know the border is open. She refused to take responsibility. She, we all know inflation is at a record uh, rate. She refused to take responsibility. And when asked, are we better now than we were four years ago? Mm -hmm. She didn't have an answer, and she pivoted to some middle-class story. The answer is no, Madam Vice President. We are not better today than we were under President Donald Trump. And this is why the American people want change, and that change agent is Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. I, I know you said, Jennifer, saying that you thought Kamala Harris actually performed fairly well in this thing. Do you know anything more about her now than you did three hours ago? I wouldn't say she performed well. She performed better than I expected. Okay. She was more precise with her language. She meandered. I don't really know what she stands for, but I think there was missed opportunity from the Trump side. Right. She stood up there and has been campaigning as if she has not been in the administration in power for the last three and a half years. Yeah. He got to that at the very end, but he did not get to it before that. He had the opportunity to, for instance, challenge the Title IX rewrite, which has removed women's sex-based rights within the education system. That's her administration. Yeah. He did not raise it. He didn't raise the fact that our kids, the learning loss from COVID has still not been addressed. That's on this administration. He had the opportunity to bring all of that up, and I, I, yeah. I can't help but feel it was a bit of a missed opportunity. What about missed opportunities for you, Elizabeth Pipko? Were there any that you saw? moderators, right? I really didn't want to be sitting here upset about that. I really didn't. I thought the American people deserved better and they would get better. But when you see two moderators spend the time to fact check President Trump and then to let the Charlottesville hoax just go on fact check, I think, I think it's disgraceful. I really do. And I I also think it's disgraceful it wasn't mentioned that there's another Charlottesville rally almost every single day for the last year in our country with thousands of people screaming for the yeah. genocide of Jews that happened under Kamala Harris and Joe Biden's leadership. No one's talking about it. No one is fact checking the same fine people on both sides lie that I've heard for several years now. And I think truly the only thing to say here is that the American people deserve so much better than that. Yeah, uh, she refused to say that she would do anything on Biden from Afghanistan. I want to go around the horn very quickly here, so let's go. I mean, the whole thing is she said she, she just skipped by a lot of questions, Steve.
because she doesn't know what she thinks about anything. This is a fundamentally mm -hmm. fake, cynical, hollow machine politician, right, who will say whatever is necessary, yeah. whatever is politically expedient. That's why she's such a danger. And that's actually what we saw tonight. I know a lot of people are saying that she won the debate because she had all the lines. That's not what this is about. It's not about delivering lines that you've spent a week learning yep. with your handlers. It's about what you would do in office. She hasn't got a clue what she would do, right. but she is fundamentally a fake politician. I mean, Harley, living to you now, the interesting thing about this is that it was kind of T-ball. ABC let her tee up a lot of big-time hits. Right. And, you know, the, the other missed opportunity that I saw is that when it came to Ukraine, on the one hand, I was a little surprised and concerned that uh, President Trump said that he, uh, when they asked him if, if he wanted Ukraine to win, he didn't answer that. That's a concern. Yeah. But on the other hand, she was setting him up when she said to him, what about your comments about inviting Russia to come into Europe? He should have responded that he is saying that he wants our European allies to pony up and pay their fair share. He didn't emphasize that enough. Yeah, uh, Harrison Fields, missed opportunities. Well, missed opportunity for Kamala Harris to address issues related to the minority community. This is an administration that has devastated minority communities with inflation and also the border crisis. When you look at inner city America, where, de where uh, President Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have allowed hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants to clog schools, recreation centers, and the communities yep. of these uh, minority communities, it's a disgrace for Kamala Harris. Uh, stand by panel, we'll get you back up in the next uh, segment. Coming up, social media by panel, we'll get you back up in the next uh, segment. Coming up, social media users calling out the ABC moderators tonight for not fact-checking Kamala Harris. But they sure like to fact-check Donald Trump. Our media panel will break it down. Coming up next, continuing coverage live, 1221 on the East Coast of the post-debate strategy. Well, here at Fox News tonight, we've been documenting the liberal media's largely lopsided coverage of Kamala Harris versus Donald Trump. So how did they do tonight? The senior national correspondent, Kevin Cork, is live in D.C. with a closer look. Kevin, good evening. Yeah, and I was watching very carefully. Even <laughs> my friend, now critics, Trey said that tonight's debate was overwhelmingly one-sided, thanks in large part to the live fact-checking of one of, but not both, of the candidates. For those of you keeping score at home, fact checks on Trump, five, I counted six, but we'll say five, Harris, Buckus, nothing. Now, there were several claims she made that were not fact checked by ABC, like that police died on January 6th, didn't happen. Trump's bloodbath comment, to totally taken out of context. Fine people on both sides, that was obviously debunked. How about Trump's support for Project 2025? The moderators had to know that wasn't true. To say nothing of Harris's claims on Trump's stance on IVF, they missed a chance on that. They also missed a chance to question her on her gun bans and mandatory buybacks. That Mr. Trump, she claimed, disparaged the military and that no active U.S. military were in a combat zone. That, too, is not true. Online, well, the media was apoplectic. Buck Sexton, the ABC moderators are fact-checking incorrectly and in such a shockingly, obviously one-sided way that Trump, enduring the ambush as well as he has, is a win. This debate has been a total sham. Questions are all attacks on Trump. It's three-on-one outrageous. Phil Kirpin added this, still zero questions about deceiving the American people about a mentally incompetent president. Jack Posobiec adds, Trump has now survived two assassination attempts in one campaign. On the other hand, MSNBC's Chris Hayes said, ABC moderator's doing an excellent job. And then there was this. Harris didn't really explain some of the big questions that were out there about why she changed her policy views on so many things. Part of the reason is Donald Trump really was not effective in bringing the debate to her. I agree with you, I think that he looked not just angry, but also rattled. Harris looked like she belonged on the stage, looked like she is somebody that can serve as president. Almost every single thing that Vice President Kamala Harris said tonight got under Trump's skin. Okay, so overall, the reaction seemed to be that the VP did fairly well, albeit unfact-checked. While the former president said on True Social tonight, I thought it was my best debate ever, especially since it was three 
on one. Sure. Yeah. Kevin Corp, live for us in D.C. Kevin, thank you. Let's bring back a few of tonight's panelists. Kaylee Hugh White, Elizabeth Pipko, Steve Hilton, Jennifer Say, and Julie Hamill. Elizabeth Pipko, I want to put this up because this is a call for number two, Katie. Politico senior political columnist Jonathan Martin writes the following. The best advice Kamala got was to get in the key hit she was prepped with no matter the question. In fact, don't worry much about the question at all. There's no prompter, but she's rattling this stuff off from her prep by memory, and it may as well be verbatim from the binder. It felt like that, very rehearsed. It, it certainly did. Look, uh, Donald Trump said when he first ran in 2015 that politicians are known for being all talk and no action, and I think Kamala Harris kind of proved that tonight. It was very clear that she prepared for this debate. It certainly was, but the problem is that instead of preparing her own policy proposals and plans for the future, all she prepared were low blows and insults against Donald Trump because she knows her best chance of winning in November is bringing people out to the polls not to vote for her, simply to vote against Donald Trump. It's a tactic they've used against him for many years. Unfortunately, Donald Trump wins on the issues. Americans are hurting right now, and they know that this was one man on the stage wanting to bring the topics back to the issues that matter to them, and a woman that wanted to insult everything about Donald Trump in the hopes of scaring voters off from voting for him. And I think the people are smarter than that. Yeah, meantime, Jake Tapper over on CNN, call for number three, said this. Vice President Harris's supporters have got to be pleased with her performance this evening, which was focused on, and A, telling voters that she cares about them and she has a plan for them. But again, Caitlin McGee White, so disingenuous because he knows very well that she did not say anything about what that plan includes. Right, and I'm sure that they are very pleased with it when the entire debate went something like this. It was the moderators turning to Trump and asking, can you please explain to us why you're such a bad person? And then turning to Kamala Harris and saying, can you please explain why Donald Trump is such a bad person? That was the entire length of the debate. There was one question about the economy. There was one question about why Kamala Harris has flip-flopped on all of her past policy positions. And as I mentioned earlier, polls this, this weekend show that voters just simply do not believe that she has genuinely changed her mind on these issues. So this was a lost opportunity for her, to be honest, to explain exactly what she believes to the American people. I mean, there was one point in time, Jennifer, say, where they said, you know, people consider you a racist, uh, former President Trump. Uh, what do you say to that? It's one of those things where, like, they set up everything as a hit piece. He's like, whoa, whoa, right? Absolutely. And I actually spotted additional lies in what, you know, the, the previous comments are cited. She said he would implement a national abortion ban. He's literally said that's not the case. I mean, whatever viewers think, he's literally said he right. would leave it to the states. I mean, the lies went on and on. But I think Jake's right. Her team must be pleased with the performance and the moderator's performance. Uh, but I, I would just say this about her. She doesn't have beliefs, she doesn't have principles, she doesn't have an ideology that informs the policies that she would put in place. She talks in circles for a reason. If you don't make any commitments, you can't be held to anything. Yeah, yeah that's a fair It's thing. on purpose. Yeah, uh, Dana Bash, here's what she said. She baited him and he took the bait every single time, as you said. She was also using the language that he usually uses. She, she kind of stole it from him. Disgrace, weak, things like that that really get to him. She's stolen his policies, Julie Hamill, so now why not steal his rhetoric, right? <laughs> well, it's interesting as an attorney to watch because she's using a technique that I like to use in depositions and cross-examinations where you look at someone, you kind of smile, right. and you get them talking, you get under their skin, and you say things like, well, people leave your rallies early. Just some petty remark, but in a very calm manner, and then they explode. And that's exactly what he did. So he fell into this very well-laid trap by Kamala. Right. She's a lawyer, she's a prosecutor, she knows how to do that, and she yep. knows how to make people explode, and it worked. Yeah, and it seems to me like she said a couple of times, I am not Joe Biden. Did she run far enough away from Joe Biden? Um, well, more importantly, did she run far enough away from herself? Because she's got to run away from herself to win this thing. <laughs> But what is herself? Because exactly as Jennifer said, like she doesn't even know. Yeah. She'll just say whatever she's told to say. I mean, a couple of things. First of all, um, I can add to the list of lies that we heard. Um, she, this, this disgraceful lie that somehow she's the champion of small business. How dare she say that? Oh, and uh, current uh, policies absolutely crushing small business. She can't even prove she worked at McDonald's. <laughs> right? 
Her agenda has been implemented here in California. It is a total disaster yeah. on every front. Small businesses particularly suffering. She has the nerve to say she prosecuted illegal yeah. immigrant crime when she was San Francisco DA, a vicious crime, a murder by an illegal immigrant. She downgraded it to right. a misdemeanor. The guy got 45 days. She has the nerve to say she stands up for the oppressed. When she was San Francisco DA, she stood against right. the victims of child sex abuse and covered it up to help the perpetrators. Took a disgrace. Took him 40 minutes, uh, Elizabeth Pipko, to get to the Kamala flip-flops in this debate. I've got about 30 seconds for you and Kayla McGee-White. Yeah, look, it was it was disgusting. It was obviously biased, and I, I think the only people like hurting here are the American people, right? Because they expected answers, they didn't get them. Let's not forget, no one got an answer to the switch up, right, from Joe Biden to Kamala Harris, a monumental moment that will go down in American history. And the American people are still wondering why that happened, how it happened, and who is leading the country right now? Because it's certainly not Joe Biden who's laying on a beach. There were no answers to any of the uh, issues, topics, or concerns of the American people. That's the real problem here, and it's because the moderators wanted to help Kamala Harris's campaign because they know she's responsible for all of these failures. Yeah. And Kayla McGee-White, she said a couple of times, it is time for us to turn the page. She wrote the page that she <laughs> wants to turn. Exactly right. And there's one thing to keep in mind here. Voters don't like feeling duped. And the fact is, we're coming off three and a half years where Joe Biden initially ran as a moderate and has governed as a far leftist. So what are, to me what are we to make of Kamala Harris? who has never tried to position herself as a moderate throughout her entire political career. Are we really supposed to believe that she wouldn't be even more far left than Joe Biden? I don't think so, and I don't think that other voters believe that either. Uh, I don't think so either, but we shall find out. Thank you all. Uh, stand by some. Some of you will see in the final round. Final round. Some. Some of you will see in the final round. We're coming right back with more of the highs and lows from the debate, plus Kamala's California record back in the spotlight tonight. We'll bring in the experts, people who live here in California, and can tell you firsthand what it is really like. Next. You tonight. Matt Finn is here live with the Trump-Harris debate highlights, maybe some lowlights. Matt, good evening. Trace, here's a quick look at some of the stronger jabs each candidate took at each other tonight. I probably took a bullet to the head because of the things that they say about me. I'm talking now, if you don't mind, please. Does that sound familiar? Donald Trump was fired by 81 million people and clearly he is having a very difficult time processing that i have talked with military leaders some of whom work with you and they say you're a disgrace the abc moderator started with the economy as the most important topic so donald trump has no plan for you and when you look at his economic plan it's all about tax breaks for the richest people I am offering what I describe as an opportunity economy. She doesn't have a plan. She copied Biden's plan, and it's like four sentences, like run, spot, run. On the topic of abortion, Trump says he has no plans of a nationwide abortion uh, uh, plan. Harris says she supports reinstating Roe v. Wade. Will she allow abortion in the eighth month, ninth month, seventh month? Come on. Okay, would you do that? Did why you, don't you ask why, that question? Why don't you answer That's the, the question? Problem. Would you because veto? Under On the border, Trump says the Biden administration let in millions of migrants, creating a new migrant crime category. They've destroyed the fabric of our country. Millions of people let in, and all over the world. This is so rich. <laughs> coming from someone who has been prosecuted for national security crimes. And Trump responded to that by saying the cases brought against him were from his political opponents, Trace. Matt, thank you. Kamala Harris touted her resume as a prosecutor during tonight's debate, but we here in California know her record best. Let's bring back our L.A.-based panel, Steve Hilton, Jennifer Say, Julie Hamill. Uh, Kamala's saying her values have not changed. It's called for one. It's worth a listen. Watch. My work that is about protecting Social Security and Medicare is based on long-standing work that I have done, protecting seniors from scams. My values have not changed. And what is important is that there is a president who actually brings values and a perspective that is about lifting people up. 
Julie Hamill, either her values have changed or she's not telling the truth. She values power and control. Um, and we were talking earlier about the fact that, you know, there's this whole debate about childless cat ladies, what a horrible insult that is. But I think the real side of this is when you don't have children of your own, what is your guiding force? What is motivating you? What is driving your decisions? And for me, everything I do is for my kids and to improve life for them and this society for them. A person like Kamala is a power hungry woman. She's going to say anything, anything that's going to help, help her accumulate more power. That is her driving force. Uh, Elon Musk had the following to say in a tweet quoting here, or sorry, an ex quoting here, the publicly stated goal by almost all leaders of the Democratic Party is to legalize the 15 million illegal migrants as soon as possible, as well as bring in tens of millions more. That would immediately make all swing states deep blue, just like happened in California with the 1986 amnesty. Turning America into a permanent one-party state, this is the last real election if Trump loses. I mean, what do you think, Steve Hilton? I think, first of all, um, it's interesting watching those clips again. I think the more you watch this, the, the more the contrast is clear, which is that the, he came across as strong, and actually she came across as weak, it seems to me, in some of these answers, and, and the, not just the way she uh, expressed herself, but the actual substance. And the, the further point, I mean, you know, you've got Elon Musk there. Uh, being supported. Right. Some of the polls that I've seen, that people have been sending me, and you can say, well, these are Trump supporters. Earlier we had the CNN saying, oh, the Kamala Harris campaign, they're going to be happy. Those supporters are going to be happy. Seems like the Trump supporters are happy. These polls are, sh are showing him winning this debate by a lot. So mm -hmm. I think that the instant verdict may well be very wrong here from a lot of the pundits. Yeah. Uh, Tim Murtaugh, he tweeted the following, quoting here, uh, Harris is straight up lying about fracking while standing in Pennsylvania. As California AG, she opposed fracking so much that she sued the Obama administration to stop fracking off the coast of California. She does not suddenly support it, Jennifer Say, which we've been saying for a long time. No, she doesn't suddenly support it. She wants to get in, and Bernie Sanders admitted she's doing this to get into office, and then she's going to go right back to the Everything line. she does is about political expedience. When it was in vogue to say defund the police, she wanted to do that. Now, I, I don't think she would publicly say that's what she wants. So what does she mean when she says my values haven't changed? What values? I, I don't know what they are. Right. But she talks in circles. Sounds kind of nice. I mean, not to us, but to enough people. She stands there and she looks poised and that's enough. She never makes any commitments mm -hmm. and people just nod along. I don't know what her values are. I don't uh, think she has any. Very quickly, Julie. I mean, Trump said a couple of times tonight she's had three and a half years to fix this thing. She hasn't done it. He, he had a couple of good hits in there. By the way, uh, 25th Amendment requires the vice president, Ms. Harris, to take action to remove an incompetent president. She's never done that. So she's supporting this palace coup. Mm -hmm. Nobody talked about that tonight. It's the elephant in the room that we have some sort of shadow government. Who the heck is running our country right now? Nobody talked about a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> uh, five seconds, Steve. What she showed us is that she's not fit to be president. Why? Because of all these points we've been making, she doesn't actually stand for anything. In office, someone like that is a terrible danger because they get blown around by events, whereas Trump showed us clearly where he stands. No one could mistake what his positions are on any issue or that he holds those positions seriously and sincerely. It's a long five seconds, Steve. I'm going to tell you that just saying. I'll take what I can. Coming up, we're, we're back with some final thoughts from our panelists. And where does it all go from here? Continuing coverage next. Now to the final two minutes, we are back for Rapid Fire Final Thoughts with Kevin Cork, Matt Finn, Steve Hilton, Jennifer Say, Julie Hamill, Elizabeth Pipko, and Kaylee McGee-White. Final thoughts on the debate, Kaylee McGee-White. I don't think that it moves the needle much because Kamala Harris's campaign rests on one question, one, one principle, which is moving forward. She said that a few times tonight. But what are we moving forward from? The Biden administration, which she is yeah. the number two in? The fact is that if voters want change, they should ditch the party that has been in power for 12 of the last 16 years. That is yeah. not Donald Trump. That's the Democratic Party. Kevin Gore. The debate will be obviously a referendum on the candidates, but I think it should be a referendum on the moderators, Trace. Yeah. Uh, Matt Finn. It seems like the former president struggles with clear, concise messaging at times, and so he leaves a lot of points on the floor, whereas yeah. tonight the vice president came out uh, with strategy and she was prepared. Uh, Julie Hamill. 
Less pet eating, less rally talk, less abortion, more First Amendment, yep. and more how are we going to support our living children right now? Elizabeth Pipko. Yeah, look, for me, it was authenticity versus phoniness, right? There's a reason Donald Trump brought up the student loan debt relief. I think it's because he wants people to remember there's one candidate on the stage that tells the American people the truth and one candidate that tells them what they need to tell them in order to win some yeah. votes, no matter whether she's telling the truth or not. And that's the real problem, and I know everyone recognizes that tonight. Yeah, Jennifer Say. I wish he talked about free speech. He said it yesterday. He said he'd sign an executive order banning uh, federal employees from censoring social media employees. He didn't say it. That's a strength. Ten seconds, Steve, because we're The about debate to made it all very clear. You've got strong, serious, and authentic versus a fake, weak, joke of a candidate. Thank you for watching America's Late News, Fox News at Night. I'm Trace Gallagher in Los Angeles. We'll see you back here tomorrow. This is no magic trick. This is the real deal. Holy field. And we close on that.